This is the Excalibur uh, from Gavco. Just going to be doing a little bit of work with it today, and the main thing I'm going to be looking at is the optimal technique for swinging it, the kind of penetration that I get roughly, the kind of fluidity roughly, and do I have any problems with durability of the edge on uh, some types of wood. I did some checking with this uh, the weekend. I was out doing some limbing, uh, clearing up some spruce, pine, fir. Worked very well. Uh, I couldn't get an effective grip up here at the top initially, but then I found later on that the very, very thin tip allows precision snap cuts on finer limbs and I found that worked much better with this sort of heavy wrist snaps and then I moved back to the middle position for most of the power chopping so that's the grip I'm going to be using mainly for today as a benchmark I'm going to be using this small Fiskars this is the old style I don't believe you can get these anymore uh, the new ones are slightly heavier I believe and they've sort of addressed most of the issues that the people had uh, with this one, which that the grip here was a bit too slick, the initial edge angle was a bit too high, uh, there were problems with durability right here on the cheeks, because you can see that the steel runs straight into the thermoplastic, and that's after being burnished a bit smooth. So they're dealt with on the new one, and this is a bit funky, whatever way they ground this, and after smoothing most of this off. So I dealt with it, most of the issues on this one, uh, put a proper edge transition on it, I used some grip tape on this, I'm eventually going to get around to checkering it so I don't have to deal with replacing the tape all over again and I smoothed this out. Now the reason that I use the Fiskars as a benchmark is because it's a production, it's available to get pretty much anywhere and it's relatively inexpensive. And again you always want to have something on hand to compare it against uh, to give you some kind of reference point as to how well it's actually cutting because otherwise unless you know an awful lot about the wood and the knife and about the kind of power going into it it's very difficult to judge but I mean if you see penetration with the Excalibur and penetration with the Fiskars you can judge based off them so it just makes it a bit more informative for anybody watching plus it also makes it a bit more informative for you because you're never always cutting the same type of wood obviously now I'm going to start off with something relatively light uh, this should easily be far too small to slow the blade down significantly So I'm going to start off with some wrist and again This is mainly just for me to get a feel for the handle to get a feel for how it cuts Because you obviously don't want to come out and put a great big piece of wood there and blast the chop into it right away Without being a hundred percent sure about how the knife and everything behaves So as expected You can see and not even significantly moving my arm this is all just wrist now the other thing that I'd like to mention is that the impact point on this blade is way out here way far in front of the handle the center of mass is only about right there now there's basically a sweet spot always just in front of the center of mass about right here on this knife that's suitable for your heavy chopping where you're going into with a lot of wrist and a lot of forearm and you're depending more basically on the inertia of the blade. That's what I type of power cutting that's right here. But you can see this blade is not designed for it because it actually has a hollow, it has a recurve. So this blade is designed to chop out here where there's more speed but there's less actual inertia. So what you have to do when you're using a blade like this is use much more of an exaggerated snap. And you can see I'm actually letting the blade go all the way back like this and then bringing it forward into a snapping type motion. And you can't actually power as much into with your wrist and your forearm because of course the impact point is out here way too far away from this little tiny lever you got down here. So if you can imagine you got the wood pushing back at the blade out here and you're trying to fight it down there, not going to work. So very different technique has to be used on this. Now in comparison, if you watch videos with this, this is Dan's blade. This is made to chop completely differently. So again, the balance point is about, stay still, right there, basically right where the grill is. So the main, again, sweet spot for chopping is just in front of that.
much closer to the handle, which means the wood is stopping it right here and you're twisting forward right here, so you have very good leverage. So when I'm chopping with this blade, it's a lot slower. It's not an exaggerated chop like that. I always have a firm grip and my hand actually goes back, but I'm retaining control. I might open it up a little, but I'm never gonna snap it all the way like that. And with this one, when I finish up, again, it's a heavy power cut, so I actually push forward like this down from my shoulder and rotate with my hand. And I can do that and get use out of it, again, because I'm cutting much closer to the blade. Now, the nice thing about having this and a blade like Gav's is that you can use this one day, and again, you're doing very heavy cushing, pushing from the shoulder, pushing forward, rotating your body, and pushing into the cut. And then on the next day, you can use Gav's blade, which is a completely different motion. And you can say it's more of an open snap cut like this, and you're snapping the blade much more about speed. Completely different fatigue, completely different muscles used. Now the interesting thing is this, Kylie's knife. I've been using this as well, and this actually fits right in between the two of them. I can use that forward on this section of blade doing snap cuts, and I can use it back here doing more heavy power cuts. It sort of falls in between both of them, and that was sort of unintentional on my part. I never really was thinking about that. Not 100% sure Kali was, maybe he was, maybe he wasn't, who knows. But it came out that this, in a way, is more versatile. It again doesn't have this kind of speed power that Gavs have up here, because again, he has that basic recurve like there, which puts the weight sort of in that area and gives you that ideal curve for chopping. So Kylie's can't match that because it doesn't have the right curvature, it's a bit flat and sweeps up. And it can't completely match Dan's for power cutting back down here, but it fits in between those. So it does better than Gav's on sort of the power chopping back here. It does better than Dan's on sort of the fast chopping up here. So it's again, it's a more versatile blade, which was quite interesting. I'll be talking more about this in some of the other videos. So now, let's get back to doing some work. So again, all I'm looking for now is just getting a feel for the handle. I'm also indexing it in my hand, basically figuring out so that I know where the knife is. And as foolish as that sounds, what you actually have to do is figure out your hand-eye coordination so you know where to place the blade. So whenever I'm doing work like this, I'm picking out spots on the wood and intentionally chopping into them so that that little discoloration there or that little rust stain there. Even when I'm chopping wood, as simple as this to cut, you're always trying to be as accurate as possible just to keep your skill level up so you can see right through that rust spot. So you're always working on your aim, that black spot, right through the rust spot again. Always working on your precision, even when you're doing trivial stuff like that. And every new blade you get will take a little bit of time before you're 100% with it. And now we got some knots in this right here. So what I'll do now is make a few cuts into them. And again, still working up power, still not nowhere near 100%. So now again, this is more of a durability, sort of precision type exercise, because all I'm doing is looking for spots to cut through in the wood, just getting some volume done, getting a feel for the knife. I'm not really going to do a comparison against the hatchet at this stage, because everything's cutting through in one hit, so you really can't get any information at this point. But you also don't want to try to do a comparison right away, because I mean, I've chopped literally tens of thousands of pieces of wood with that Fisker's hatchet. So you wouldn't want to start off comparing Gav's blade to that when you're using a knife you haven't used that much. And again, always trying to get your precision down. See, cleave right through that knot. Always working on that. Oh, 
Okay, that's good. So about tree. And again, I'm always cutting up wood anyway, because I burn most of this stuff. So I'll normally cut about a hundred sections of wood with a blade and a hundred sections of wood with the Fiskars side by side to get a relatively decent average. But usually, if you're fairly comfortable with the blades, you can tell, you can get an opinion much faster than that. Now, of course, when you start cutting really, really thick wood, the axe is going to pull ahead because the greater contact area, as you can imagine, if you tried to cut six inch wood with this and you'd be cutting a contact of like this, you'd really, really slow down on the penetration. But the axe always keeps the same contact area. And see, that's where precision comes in. You don't want to be wasting your cuts. Now this is basically some actual wood, the other that was just basically composite materials and sheeting which tends to bind down blades a lot more because it doesn't have a grain that opens up. So you'll notice both the Excalibur and the Fiskars are much more fluid in this. As you can see the wood is opening up. Now again, since now I'm aiming more for actual cutting efficiency, I'm going to avoid some of the knots and work in clear wood. And I'll cut this basically opposite to the grain. You can see the grain of this wood, we can see it a bit clearer, runs this way. So it'll actually cut easier this way because I'll split along the grain. I'll turn it over this way, it's a bit harder to cut. And I'm doing that intentionally to get higher chop counts with the knives because a higher chop count is just more accurate when I do uh, ratio performance. And again, you can see there, that's why it's important to have the precision to be able to place your cuts where you want them. Because if that second cut had the miss, it's just wasted. So instead of doing three cuts, you could end up doing six or seven. And all of a sudden your tool is performing at like 50%. So that's one of the reasons why if you're serious about buying a decent axe or a decent knife, invest the time to become at least decent at chopping. It doesn't make a lot of sense to spend like a lot of money on an axe or a knife to try to get better performance when a little bit of extra work 
will make a much bigger difference. This is a bit awkward to cut, so my power is going to be reduced because it's up actually that high. So this is actually way above my waist I'm impacting. So you can see there the increase in penetration and again you don't want to jump too much into that because that could be a soft piece of wood compared to what the Fiskars was cutting but you can see basically from the rest of the cutting as well the penetration is higher which you would expect and again nowhere near full power. I won't get that from that side. One thing which is an issue with over penetration of course uh, basically is the binding which is why in general if you were cutting you know for productivity not tooling around like I'm doing out here you wouldn't come in with a full force cut in the beginning. Notice how the cut over here opened up immediately that's because it's chip releasing. So you normally start off with a half power cut then clear it out. That again lets you move more fluid but I'm not 100% using these blades as I would if I was again actually doing an enormous volume of this work I'm looking at sort of issues of maximum power and utility and stuff like that just getting a feel for them. So if you were cutting sensibly and again you don't want to fight the blade all the time you come in relatively soft on your first cut so you only have light penetration comes out trivially. Your second cut is going to come out easily anyway because it's going to open up the chip. So that's chip out of the wood with no binding and that's how you cut it functionally if you're actually going to do it. Now all you do is you look at this and you say okay I'm coming down to about here with this cut I can get about the same here so I can follow through on a drive if I open it up on the other side. Same thing come in a bit light now you can come in heavy open up the chip because the blade's going to come out because it's going to chip release in the wood to a certain extent. A little bit less in OSB than other wood get out of the way. But that distance now, again, this cut's coming up, this cut's coming down, so I can probably make them meet with a single cut. And you can see that's a lot more fluid than coming down first with a full cut. Very happy with the way uh, that this has turned out initially. Performance uh, solid. It's more versatile in some ways than I thought. I was a bit concerned, get out. Uh, the first time that I saw it with this tip because it's very very thin Still not 100% sure about that, but that'll just come in use But what it's working for again really well is doing sort of very precision cuts with a grip like this And when I got a heavy limbed in area You don't want to just try to bash the knife through all of them because it'll just scow all over the place I can use the tip and go in a bound pop 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 do surgical strikes to take the limbs out and then move back to the sweet section right there and bam clear the larger limbs out so really like the way that combination, the, the really thin tip and this forward grip area is uh, working really well. This is working really nicely uh, for power chopping. And again, I can go back a bit further here because it swells at the end. Uh, but this is mainly for really, really light work, like brush clearing and such. Uh, because even though you could use this for power chopping, you have almost no control at the end. Like the blade can move around a lot in your hand at this point and while it has a lot more power you just don't have the control so precision goes down and you'll end up doing more cuts anyway because they're not going to line up exactly where you want and the other thing that I meant to mention earlier 
is where this spine is nice and rounded. It makes it easier to come out of the wood when it gets trapped. If this is squared off, it actually gets trapped in the wood and it's harder to get out. So that's a nice detail uh, right there. And a couple of people messaged me about this because uh, you can see in a couple of the other videos, if you pause and still frame them, that this is a bit rough in terms of finish, uh, both the handle uh, especially, and even the blade. And they asked me, you know, is are all these blades like that? Is that sort of intentional? It was. Like when uh, Mike was making this knife, I said to him, you know, like, this is going to be used. I want it to be functional. Don't care how it looks at all. So get it to the right shape. Get the handle to the right shape. And don't worry about anything else. So again, that's just the way that I wanted it. He can make a handle look a lot nicer than this, obviously. And he can do nice finishes on the blades. Uh, and you can look at some of his other work and you can see he does absolutely beautiful work.